to me, the, the most important thing around shopping marketing is organizational alignment. It's really the secret to shopping marketing success. And shopping marketing is not just a sales function. We talked a little bit about this with some of the questions earlier today. True success comes when the entire organization is aligned around the commitment to shopping marketing across all functions. Not just marketing and sales, but also research, R&D, however your company is set up. Everyone's got to be thinking about things from a shopping mindset as well as a consumer mindset. And uh, you'll hear that theme throughout this around the day to shop in the organization. I'm going to take a couple of steps back first and talk about why shoppers are so important today. I think you've, you've seen some of this stuff, but the next four or five slides are really some of the things that, while you guys probably realize what I'm going to show you, these are things that your organization really needs to understand. And we've done actually some of these slides at a presentation of the National Sales Meeting, and while most of the people in the room got it, a lot of the comments afterwards were all about have, have our marketing people see this? Because they really need to see this. It's really important for them to understand the same stuff that they're So you see a great picture here. Everyone knows Johnson's baby. And, uh, I see a smile over there. It definitely it gives you a feeling, doesn't it? And, and that feeling there creates purchase intent. That's what marketing does. Marketing focuses on creating a need in a consumer's mind. And then that consumer becomes a shopper. Now, this is not one set. That's actually three top customers, maybe toiletries. So, the big headline here is intent doesn't mean purchase. And that's why in-store is so important. Because when that consumer wants to buy something, and they go out to the store, and they see this, it's a high likelihood they're not going to buy anything. So intent does not mean purchase. Additionally, Media has changed so much over the last 10 years, and Jonathan had a bunch of slides to talk about how much data is changing, technology is changing. Along with that, the way that consumers consume media has changed dramatically over the last bunch of years. And along with that, the ability to reach them has changed as well. So consumers are tough to reach. 1970, 60% of consumers could be reached very easily through network television. 2007, 17%. And based on the numbers that Jonathan threw out today, I would imagine it's probably closer to 10% now. We've got internet, we've got cell phones, we've got so many different ways to get information. And honestly, just on television, with TiVo and DVR, you're zipping right past those ads anyway. So while that Johnson & Johnson ad up in the front there is a fantastic ad, it's not as easy to get that in front of people as it was just a few years ago. So shopping becomes that much more important. In-store though, the number of people in-store is, is huge. Costco, 20 million a week. Walgreens, 30. Kroger, 68 million people a week. Walmart, 150 million a week. Compare that to the 35 million that watched the grand finale, the finale of American Idol. So there's a huge disparity there of where people are. And of those 35 million who watch American Idol, I would imagine a lot of them DVR'd it or skip past the ads or put it on pause to go to the bathroom and came back and zip past them versus the people in Walmart that not only were in the stores, but they're in buying mode. So the, the opportunity to influence them is much higher. Some statistics. 70% of decisions are made in store. 5% are loyal to one brand. 26% are loyal to one store. Shoppers only buy 66% of what's on their list. Those are pretty staggering numbers. So why is in-store so important? As you're starting to talk to your companies about why they need to focus here, it's not that they shouldn't focus on consumer anymore, it's that there's a whole lot of other places they need to focus too. It's not an or, it's not consumer, traditional media, or shopper, it's an and. You've got to do both. So today, shoppers have all the power, they're your consumers, but they're in a buyer mindset. So here's, here's one of our marketing senior people. This is what I would call an enlightened marketer. She said this about a year and a half ago. This is my favorite quote. I've probably said this quote dozens of times, and I think Jonathan could probably quote this as well. It used to be very easy to reach consumers. I could advertise on ABC, NBC, and CBS and reach the majority of them. But things have changed so much, and there's so many different ways to get to media today and get to consumers today, that consumers are consuming it very differently than they ever have in the past. I don't know where they are. I have no idea where they are. But the one place I do know they are is in the store. And they're in my book. That is our VP of marketing on our kind of business. Your, your organization needs to have people like that. There need to be more and more people preaching this gospel 
you know, walking through the organization saying shopper is really important. So how do we leverage shopper marketing? Shopper marketing, or how we got to where we are today around shopper marketing, has evolved a lot. Back in the 80s, it was really trade marketing. It was consumer promotion, it was space management, we had POS data. Some of you might have worked with Sammy. You remember the old Sammy reports. That was a very push-pull relationship with our customers. We had focused on the nuts and bolts of displays and promotions. We managed shelf space. We managed our brands. And we had some data, not a whole lot to track the business. Then comes the 90s. We had trade marketing still and consumer promotion. That space management kind of evolved into category management. And we also had cattle data to understand consumers a little bit more. We started to understand what consumers were doing and how they were behaving a little bit more. So we focused on the nuts and bolts. We started to manage brands as well as categories. Really, TPG templates, black Friday templates, and then beginnings of partnerships, you can argue, I guess there are partnerships, between manufacturers and retailers. And uh, we, we then uh, also had consumer understanding via value. So we started to understand consumers a little bit more. Come 2000, customer marketing and co-marketing, more of a partnership now with our customers, still doing category management, and then shopper insights. Now, we could probably debate over what is a shopper insight. Is a shopper insight the same as shopper marketing? There's so many different definitions. What I'm talking about with shopper insights is the ability to now have some insights about the shopper. And I would say that around